Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's tutorial, we're going to learn how to create a simple app using OpenAI GPT 3.5 Turbo and Bubble IO to expand our meeting notes into a more detailed summary. So let's get started. So first I'll be introducing you to a fantastic platform called Bubble IO, which allows you to create web applications without any coding knowledge. If you're looking into building a web app quickly and efficiently, you're in the right place. Bubble IO is a visual web development platform that empowers users to create fully functional web applications without writing a single line of code. It uses a powerful drag and drop interface. So I'll just click here and show you. It's making it accessible to everybody regardless of their technical background. With Bubble.io, you can build everything from simple landing pages to complex apps and advanced features and integrations. So in Bubble, as you can see, everything is selectable and you can edit it right here in the panel for each element. Each element has comes with a panel and each element is drag and drop. So let's say you want to change the position here of uh, this CTA and this text. You simply need to select it and drag it. That's it. If you want to add some new elements, it's also easy. So let's say I will select my footer here and just drag it down because I want to add a video container here with a uh, YouTube video, let's say so this, I could just come here, select video and drag it. Maintain my shift key to keep my proportions and add a video container here. And I would just need to put the video ID for my YouTube and play a video in here. So as you can see, bubble is really, really fast for prototyping and actually creating um, production ready applications also. So for this demo, I will teach you how to use bubble and I will show you here, uh, the final product that we're going to use. So it's called expand my meeting notes. And as an example here, I will paste some raw meeting notes that I took during a meeting here. So Let's just put these. I'll try to structure this a little bit better just for my visual aid. It's only for me. I don't need to do this. The AI is smart enough to separate everything, but for me. So as you can see, meeting notes on April 5th, attendees, all right, with their respective um, functions. Uh, a lot of grammar and orthograph mistakes because I type really fast, but honestly, I did this on purpose just to show you how intelligent AI is. So as you can see, and now I will send my notes to this application and chat GPT version 3.5 turbo will make me a nice expandable notes. So meeting notes, April 5, project service development, project Titan location, conference room 3B, attendees, he's putting me these. Review of last week, the development team found bugs and focused on improving the AI functions. The data gathered and analyzed new data set. The UX team provided update of the application. So as you can see, ChatGPT turned my notes into an amazing, uh, ready to send to my bus <laughs> notes. So I can just take these and follow them to the rest of the team. So this was really easy to do. Uh, it's something that I done in under 30 minutes with bubble IO, and I'll teach you how to do it. And I'm sorry, I said chat GPT a couple of times, but it's not chat GPT. It's actually the GPT 3.5 model from OpenAI. So I will show you, I will show you where to find this. It's under, uh, I think the documentation, we're going to be using the chat completion, uh, function here. And here's an example of how to use the GPT 3.5 turbo model 
specifying a system role and a user role. So let's get started. First things first, you need to create your account if you don't already have one for OpenAI. Uh, to create an account on OpenAI, if I'm not mistaking you, let's log out just to make sure here. So you go to openai.com. You go to platformopenai.com. So that's the URL. You can log in. I use my Google account to log in. So for me, it's easier. It's faster. It's going to verify I'm a human. And once I'm here, you need to set up. The first step is to set up your API key. So for this project, you're going to just go to your API keys. First things first, you need to have uh, a paid account to, to be able, because it's not free. It's not expensive, but it's not free. Uh, you can go see, you can send your usage limits. You can see your usage. So let's say today uh, I use five cents only, all right? And I made a lot of tests. We used to have uh, an $18 grant that was active up to April 1st, and now it's expired. So uh, you need to subscribe to a paid plan. It's really not, not that expensive as you can see. Okay, so once you have your paid plan, you need to go to your API keys and create a new API key. Okay, I already use my maximum number of API keys, so I'm not going to delete one because I know this one, I never use it and I'm not going to use it. So create your API key and save it somewhere where you will remember it because as you can see, there's no way to edit this API key once you created it. You cannot see it again, so you will have to delete your API key, all right? So once we have the API key, store it in a safe place, and let's go to Bubble. So into Bubble, you can create your account, get started. It's free. Pricing, they have different pricing plans. The free one for now will will work for me. If you want to pay a monthly one, $25 a month, you can use your own domain name if I'm not mistaken. And it's going to remove all the bubble IO uh, branding. Yeah, it's going to remove the, the bubble IO branding. So I'm going to log into my account. And the first step, once we're logged in, is we are going to create our a new app. So let's say GPT 3.5 expand notes. So let's create the app. So once we created our first app we're going to be re redirected to the step one of four of crew getting started so here you can put your application name for this demo i will leave this you put whatever you want you can select right away what fonts you want to use so let's take one let's go to next step you can personalize the colors here by the default colors of your app um so let's go here and it's asking you if you want to add some plugins to your application. For this demo, we're going to need the API connector as we are going to connect to our Opens AI API. So once you click installed, you can get started building. So first step, there's a little demo here telling you what you can do. You can drag and drop, you can set columns. You can see the documentation, use components from the library. It's all drag and drop. So if you want to use like a header, you just drag and drop it here. And there you go. It's in your app. So you can start this way. I'm going to delete this um, as we're not going to use it. 
So bring your vision to life and you can just edit these directly. You can close the component bar here. So you can double click and once you're happy with your app, you can preview it here by clicking the preview button here. All right. So this gives you a URL where you see what you have been created. So what we're going to need for this application first is I want to put a heading. So I want to use a text here to give it a name. So this will be expand my meeting notes. All right. And I want to change the styling here. I can go directly into styling or I can select an attribute. I'm going to use it as an H1 and I'm going to change the width of this to be 100%. Okay. So these, I can add some padding. I like to add some padding because if you preview the app, it's going to be really here. It's too close, so I want to give it some uh, a little bit of padding. So I will give some 40 pixels all around. Okay, so I'm happy with this. Now I will need um, a multi-line input to input our text, so our notes. And I don't know why it's... I need to give it some margin also, I'm guessing right now. So layout, margin, bottom, we're going to give them maybe 60 pixels here. Okay, so I gave them some margins here. The width, for the width of this, since I want it to be a mobile app, probably I'm going to put this at 375 pixels and a minimum height of uh, 300 pixels. And inside I'm going to give them maybe 20 pixels padding. So I'm just going to copy this and put it everywhere. So I have my text here and I'm going to need now a submit button that I'm going to add right under and I'm going to give my submit button some spacing also. So I'm going to give him maybe a 10 pixel margin and a 20 left margin. Actually, I'm going to give some margin here too, to my text box. So I want to give him uh, 20 pixels. So it's now all aligned. This one I had gave a left padding I'm going to put it at 20 also and 20 years so everything is aligned so if I come here and I refresh my page I see my text is aligned everything is all right perfect and we're going to need a group so we're going to create a group here the width this is going to be 375 also. And inside of my group, we're going to add another multi-line. No, I'm going to add a text field actually. So this is going to be raw text. I'm just going to drag and drop it where I want it. And inside of my layout for my text. I want this to be 375 and have maybe a 500 pixels height. Okay. So I want to add probably a border to this. So if I find my styles, I can come to border, put a solid border. Let me go see how it looks. Okay. I want to put some padding also inside of this so let's say 20 again that's what we put everywhere
and if I refresh, I'm happy with the results. Maybe I want this text to be a little bigger or not. Anyways, we're not here to design this. I'm going to show you only the functionality. So first step we designed. Now what we need to do is to connect uh, to GPT to Open's AI API. So for this, we installed the API connector before. So what we're going to do is we're going to add an API here. So you can give it a name. So I'm going to just give it open AI expand meeting notes. That's the name I'm going to give him. Well, actually it's the API name. So let's say open AI 3.5 uh, turbo. The authentication method we're going to use is a private key in the header. And we need to give them uh, an authorization here. The value will be bearer with the private token that you created before. I told you to save it somewhere safe. Um, and you know what? <laughs> I didn't save mine. So I will go back to my account here, delete this one and I'll create a new one. So I'll delete it after this video also. So you guys cannot use it and <laughs> get try. So here, bearer space, and you put your token. Now, uh, we're going to add, uh, headers, a shared header for the call and what we're going to use is a content type and the value is application JSON. So now we need to add a shared parameter here. So click add and expand the API call here. And what we want to do here is use it as an action. The data type, we will leave it to JSON and we need to create a post action and the url is going to be api.openai.com v1 chat completions and this is inside of the documentation i'm not sure where it is i think it's in chat completions so yeah it was here this guide explains how to make an api call for chat base so the create chat completion post uh, route is here, the endpoint. So this is the one we're using. And under the instructions here, you can see it's giving you an example of how to use this. So this is what we're going to do. So let's go back to, I'm sorry, I'm just going to close a couple of tabs that I'm not using. So now, um, I put, yeah. Okay. I put the, this, so we need to code, uh, we need to code some JSON here to send the request to the API. So you're going to open your curly braces since this is JSON. And what we're going to do is we're going to first, we need to specify what model we want to use. And the model here that I want to use is the GPT, GPT 3.5 turbo next, um, we need to add a message parameter with the role for the system and the role for the user. So this is an example. So in under the role here, this is where we want to tell, um, GPT what we want him to do. So your role is as a system, you are a helpful assistant, expand the given meeting notes into a more detailed summary. This is what I want him to do. And me as a user, I'm going to give him expand these meeting notes and I'm going to pass a variable here. So inside of bubble IO, you can pass va variables here by putting these open and closing brackets. And once you add these, you're going to see, it's going to give you a key here and a value. You can leave the value empty because it's going to fetch it dynamically. And since we want this key to be 
uh, uh, accessible, we need to uncheck the private. Once you created this, you can then give him the max tokens that we want him to use. In this case, I'm going to give him max tokens of 400. And by the way, these, this is where, this is going to give you the output length of the answer he's going to give you. So if you live, live, leave this at maybe 100 tokens, your answer might be cut off. Okay. So I'm going to give him the maximum tokens we can use is 400, but remember you're paying for tokens. Then we're going to specify the temperature. The temperature is the temperature. The, how can I explain what the temperature is? Um, the temperature is a parameter that will influence the randomness of the AI's output. So a higher value closer to one will result in a more diverse rep response while a lower value like zero will make the output more focused and, and deterministic. In this example, the temperature is set to 0 0.8, which will provide a balance between creativity and consistency. And last, we will give in the stop parameter here. Um, the stop parameter, I think it's optional. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, the stop parameter can be used to specify one or more strings that when encountered by the AI will cause it to stop generating text. In this case, the value is set to null, meaning there's no specific stop string defined. So once we have this, we're, we're going to click initial, initialize call and see what we're going to get. So there was an issue raw response, you must provide a model parameter. So I thought I did give him a model. Mm, why is this? So let me just try to understand. Did I misspell this? I don't think so. Message. Stop. Or so let me see authentication private key in header authorization my mirror token is there oh I forgot the content type here I thought I put this content type application JSON Let's try this. All right, so it's working. So as you can see, we're getting some results back. I can show the raw data here. And I'm sorry, I cannot expand on the meeting notes as there are no notes. Of course, we did not give him any notes. So this is ready. So now we're going to create our workflow. All right. So the workflow is going to be when I click the edit button here will this will be send so now we want to select our button here we're going to name this button send notes all right and we are going to start our workflow so right click on the button go to start edit workflow and what we want to do with this button is to go to our plugins and initiate our OpenAI GPT 3.5 Turbo Call, right? So what we want to pass here is dynamic data and that data will be get data from an external API. No, I'm sorry, that's not it. We want to, sorry, we, what we want to give him is our multi input A. So the value from our input. So this is our input here. We did not give him a name, but you can see him. The, the name is multi input A. 
So in our workflow, when we click the button, we want to send the value to the open AI API. Step two is we want to create uh, some meeting notes. So we're going to go into create a new thing, or if you don't want to type, you go into data things, create a new thing. And so you're going to create a new type. You're going to call it meeting notes. And we want to create a new field. The field will be the raw data that we'll receive from uh, the API. And this raw data, we want it to be a text. So let's create this. And we're going to set the raw data to be the results of step one. So this means it's going to go get what the, the API will give us back. And what we want is to select the choices. And from the choices, we want to use the first element. Because we could ask ChatGPT to give us three results. Not ChatGPT, sorry. We could ask GPT to give us three results or more or two. Anyways, for this example, we just want to use the first one. So we're going to select the first one and we want to get the message content. So now we did our call to the API. We sent the information from our text field here. So our workflow is going. And now what we want to do is we want to display the results. So we're going to create a new one here. And we want to display the data in a group or a pop-up. That's why I created uh, previously a group here. Okay, so my group is called group B. So I want to display the results in a group. Which one? Inside of group B. So what we want to display here is the results of step two. That's it. And last step, we're going to go back to our design. We're going to select our field here. And we want to insert dynamic data. That's the parents group meeting notes raw data. And I think that is it. So let me preview. Let me test this. So let's say I'm recording video youtube um open ai gpt 3.5 turbo bubble eo i'm putting some mistakes on purpose um explain how to code app, no code. So let's try this, send notes. Let's see where we see here, this is a little. So I'm sorry, there are no meeting notes available to expand. Please provide me with some more information. So, okay. I guess I forgot a step here. Um. So let's go see my workflow. I'm sure I had put this dynamic data. So this was the information. We're sending the information from our multi-input A workflow. So here, send dynamic data, multi-input A this is value. Create new meeting note. So everything is there. So let's preview this again. I'm 
recording YouTube video about open AI GPT 3.5 turbo explaining how to code no code variable yo so let's try this let's save this in case i need to reput this so here we go during the meeting it was discussed that the topic of the upcoming youtube video will be about Recording videos, their group also talked about Open's AI new release of GPT 3.5. In addition, team discussed the use of Bubble IO. So what I'm seeing is it's being kind of creative. And I think this is because we set uh, the temperature to be 0 0.8. So maybe if we would change that to put it closer to zero it would be a little less creative let me just try with the notes from uh, the example i gave you before okay so here what i'm seeing is uh, it started okay but it's being cut off so make sure in your when you come to your application that you give him enough space here so let's say my group here i had a height of 280 I'll give it a height of 1000 pixels and this one here, I'll just drag it to go all the way to the bottom here. Let's preview this now. So let's give him again, these nodes, or you can also use a multi-line input probably. So this is better. See, now I'm getting something closer to what I want. So there you have it, a quick introduction to Bubble IO, an amazing platform that lets you build web apps without coding knowledge. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumb up and subscribe to my channel for more tutorials and guides. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please, please feel free to leave a comment below. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.